Our presenter today is Anthony Presley. He is the owner and founder of TimeForge. And he's got a lot of good information for you guys. So, Anthony, if you could take it away, I would appreciate it. Thanks so much for the uh, introduction there. Um, just wanted to go ahead here, and we'll get we'll get started here. Uh, as Jonathan mentioned, we are talking about labor management and how you can help your customers out, um, taking advantage of some of the uh, new technology in the retail space, as well as some of the political changes relating to the Affordable Care Act. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and, and get started here. Um, just a little bit about who I am. I'm the president and CEO of TimeForge. Uh, we provide real-time labor management uh, solutions, and we really focus on making sure that's integrated so that we both have uh, operations and HR invested, which usually means uh, the IT team is as well. So our product uh, provides scheduling, applicant tracking, uh, time tracking with punches and biometrics, uh, getting into payroll prep, HR functionality, and, and the reason we're all on the call is because we do interface into the sales and POS system. And so what I do primarily is to work with our dealer channel and also to help customers run their businesses efficiently. Um, and then I work on educating our customers and our dealer community on new technology and new laws. Just so you guys are aware, our team is the team that wrote the book on the Affordable Care Act, which we uh, entitled Obamacare, a Handbook for Employers. It's the only comprehensive resource for employers, and we designed it entirely for retail and restaurant customers. Um, it's a pretty comprehensive book, and we'll go ahead and pedal that off a little bit to you, um, along with some free resources that have to do with the Affordable Care Act. Um, and since you're on this call, we'll actually go ahead and get you a free copy of the book. If you're interested in it for you or for how it applies to your customers, go ahead and send your name and address to that email address, support at timeforge.com, make your subject line a uh, free webinar, and we'll actually go ahead and get you one sent out to you uh, today. So the whole reason we're having this call here is a little bit about education and how we can maybe extend a little bit beyond um, kind of sales services and how those might be applicable to our customer base. So we're talking here about real-time views into store-level sales and being able to combine that with the labor to tell us if we're understaffed, are we overstaffed, do we have too high of payroll, do we not have enough customer service, um, what are we doing with payroll hours, do we know if we are uh, going into overtime or not? And how can we take a look at that in real time rather than our customers trying to look at that at the end of the day or end of the week? Um, looking at building schedules and keeping staff in the loop, um, as well as efficiency. So are we getting the sales per man hour that we need? And traditionally in retail, these have been separate systems. Um, I think there's a pretty significant push, and, and we're helping push that along to get all of this combined together so that we've got some real-time insight as to how our businesses are functioning. As I mentioned, we, are, we do provide a number of functionality pieces for labor management. And it's a web-based system, so we'll get into some of the nitty-gritty details here in just a minute. But it's web-based, uh, works on an iPad wherever you are. We have a piece of software that interfaces in with whichever POS platform. Uh, today, obviously, we're going to focus on uh, our RMS and Microsoft Dynamics plugins with AX, um, but we do interface with about 15 or 20 different point-of-sale platforms, including products from NCR, products from um, Micros, um, PosiTouch, Dinerware, uh, a number of different products. We also support about 20 different payroll exports, including Microsoft uh, Great Plains, QuickBooks, Sage, ADP, and, and some other systems. Um, just to get a little bit of highlights about our specific RMS and Dynamics integration, we do read sales from the point of sale system every 30 minutes, and we send it up to our servers every 30 minutes. And because we do that, you have availability to get insight into your labor, who's clocked in, into your schedule, into your forecasted sales, and also into what's really going on in your store. And that's available in our mobile app, on our website, um, and also through text and email alerts so that your operational um, persons 
don't have to go back and forth to a computer to find out whether or not they're above or below labor percentages. Uh, we can read employees out of AX, so there's some added functionality, as you are well aware of, in AX. Um, we also have integration into Great Plains. Our interface into Great Plains uh, is going to primarily be focused around the payroll processing, but we can read data out of Great Plains using Great Plains as the master source, a master record, if you will, for employees, positions, pay rates, departments and then we send that back into TimeForge. So the goal here being that we have a single place where um, customers are inserting data and TimeForge is letting them do that one time rather than on and on. Some of our future roadmap is reading more of the sales out of AX, um, getting down into item level or UPC level sales of data, which we do with some other platforms but haven't fully finished with AX. And then who knows what other kinds of information we're going to want to get out of RMS or, or AX, depending on, on our customers' demands. So a little bit of how the, uh, the system works. So we've, you know, employees can access our, uh, we'll call it a cloud, but our, our servers that are in Dallas. Uh, we also have some servers in California where it's re replicated for backup purposes. And then we have um, multiple locations, and, and each location is a corporate entity inside of our software which interfaces then with the POS and the time clock and so we do install a piece of software on the RMS or AX system which pulls through the database or is triggered to our system one way or the other and um, that information then gets sent up to our system. Time clock is also located on the same network usually um, although you can have as many time clocks and we can talk about how we can do clocking in and out um, which could be done a, a number of ways. Scheduling. So our view on scheduling, kind of start, starting with the first module that we have, is that communication is key and all staff members should pull their own weight. And so we want to make sure that your staff are not waiting around and they don't, you don't want them to, to be this guy just waiting on, on the schedule. So if we make sure our communication is, is sent out, what the business requirements are and what the staff need, then we can make the schedule mesh in the middle. So one way to view our schedule is to look at something like a Microsoft Excel type view. Uh, this particular view is what we call our weekly schedule. Uh, there's a lot going on on this screen. Uh, it's all very functional. And if you look up in the top right, we have icons telling us about warnings or alerts where we've exceeded hours or gone under hours. Uh, we can see all of the shifts down for Sandra Allen or Allen Sandra there um, going across. And this is blown up, obviously, to make uh, make room on the PowerPoint, so it's a little more readable. Um, but as you scroll through the uh, the page there, uh, for each day, we can see total number of hours, labor costs, and you can even see some percentages there, which will blow up on the next screen, where we can see our, our labor percentages and even get into sales per man hour. <coughs> Excuse me. On the right side actually is a um, where we're in green. We actually have five hundred ninety-five dollars worth of uh, labor, five hundred ninety-five hours worth of labor that we could use, uh, and we do allow you to set up budgets based on dollars, hours, percentages, um, quite a few number of of uh, metrics that you can use. Editing shifts is very straightforward. We give you totals across departments, across multiple locations so if your customer base is uh, one uh, location or is 500 locations the software will scale it's not a problem um, and it works just fine um, making sure that staff who work across multiple departments or locations are meeting all of the requirements um, for overtime as well as for uh, the Affordable Care Act here in, in the United States we do have the ability to do automated schedule building and so we can start with uh, just building one shift at a time we can use templates we can go um, into even more automated where we forecast sales and we have algorithms to do that for the customer or we can enter in manager projections what they think is going to happen and the end result uh, usually looks something like what we call our shift builder here where we set up rules based on the number of baggers that we have for every $500 in sales that we forecast, we need one employee. 
and for bakers our minimum shift should be four and then we hit go and based on uh, that information looking at our customer service levels the software can actually generate all of the shifts for customer and then it can actually run our auto scheduler to fill it in so now we're talking about 100 percent automated schedule building um, just by plugging in our sales and establishing our service levels we also have a view of the schedule that's a little more like a Gantt chart, uh, graphical, um, being able to click on shifts and see who is available, who's not available, who's over their maximum and under their minimum hours. Um, that same view comes along with letting us know where our sales are forecasted. So in this case, the purple line is our sales projections, and we can see a sales spike that our labor does as well. Uh, and for some businesses, that's great. And for other businesses, they need to front load or back load the labor if you're a bakery, for example. Getting into time tracking, next module, so we're talking about attendance. Uh, you know, we're watching out for sweethearting. Uh, we're trying to not surprise anybody. Uh, we want to make sure that breaks are handled in the appropriate uh, areas. For example, California, New York, break tracking is very, very important. And we want to make sure we're comparing that to the schedule on a daily basis. So. Uh, you know, this is really just trying to make sure that our staff are staying honest and they're not entering in their time cards. And we don't end up in this kind of a situation with HR panicking as we try and figure out what's going on. So TimeForge has a number of ways to do clocking in and out. Uh, biometrics are very common in retail. Uh, we have three different options in that case, uh, ranging from a touchpad uh, type interface all the way to just a single USB scanner. Um, these all share the same scanner, so you can register on one and have the fingerprints uh, automatically flow to another store or two stores. Um, and they're, they're hardened and made out of Gorilla Glass, so they can take quite a bit of abuse. Um, in addition to these, we can do um, web-based clocking in and out if that's allowed, and we even have an app that will do clocking in and out either as a kiosk or, or not, so we can use pretty much any platform as necessary to clock in and out. Um, we do have a real-time view of our clocked-in staff members. So if you log into TimeForge and you go to see who's clocked in, you get these kinds of views of information. This is really important, obviously. Um, you can see on the left side, we have 52 people that were scheduled today. And if we go all the way down, you see there's 19 people that were clocked in. We can see a little further down, we had $1,200 in, in ske uh, scheduled labor. And we've used uh, $390 of that. And the bottom line shows us in green uh, what our difference is. And that's a green number because we stayed under our daily budget. So if we blow the budget, it turns red and can send us an alert. Over on the right side, we've got everybody who's clocked in, how long they've been clocked in, how many hours they've worked. And we can, based on permissions, actually clock them out right from this screen. I'm not going to bore you to death with the editing of time punches, just um, let you know that we do obviously allow you to edit punches with the proper permissions. Some staff are, may be allowed to see the costs, others are not. And we can support an unlimited number of pay codes, and we can then stack those. So if we need to stack for the state of California based on union rules, and it's a Wednesday, and you're a night clerk, and um, and you've been there more than three years, and it's also Christmas Day, and you get paid a bonus, uh, we can handle all of that as well. This gets into more of the editing of punches, overriding pay codes, uh, working around meal durations, which in some states are required, um, handling uh, exporting to accounts. So if we need to export to a GL code uh, for a particular punch, we can do that as well. So. Getting into maybe some of the more sexy uh, side of labor um, management, getting into some of the uh, analytics and knowing who's uh, showing up, what are, are we hitting our metrics, are, are people swapping shifts too much, um, that kind of information is all available here inside of what we might call our analysis and reporting tools. And all of our reports are done in real time, they're not in batch time. So unlike a system from 10 or 15 years ago from many of our competitors, uh, we've got these batches that happen at the end of the week. Uh, we don't do that, and so this is all done in real time. So we're looking at being able to plug in 
actual figures. Uh, we can do figures by department. We can do them by store. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have a, a new product coming out that will do them by UPC. Um, and so lots of fun metrics there uh, that can be tracked and, and you can take a look at. We have obviously a number of reporting capabilities that surround this information. This particular report we kind of call our Holy Trinity. Because this report happens to have on it uh, the first column here on the left being our bakery uh, and, and the departments inside of our store, the next column being our net sales, gross sales, could be really any sales metric. We're trying to hit 10% of our labor percentage across all of those departments. You can see what we scheduled, what our scheduled threshold was, and then the same thing on the attendance, and we can see averages and totals. So it's going to let us know where we are operationally that we might be able to cut labor or um, better optimize our store for our customers' needs. The same kind of report that we can break down in an hour, 15-minute period, half-hour period, showing similar information, but in this particular case, you can see very rapidly with the 32,000 percent threshold uh, going to 165, and we're read a long time during the day. Um, this is a front-loaded department, something like a bakery or a uh, cupcake-type shop where we're doing lots of labor up front. We don't actually sell anything until the afternoon where we catch up. So very important information to know if you're trying to keep an, uh, an eye on this, this type of data. TimeForge does have uh, over 160 reports. We add new reports all the time uh, to our system. All of our reports can be run by employee, by department, by location, uh, so you can drill down into that information. We also have the ability to schedule reports. So overtime for reports, for example, can be sent out to key management personnel uh, every hour, every day as you, as you need it to be sent out, uh, end of month recaps. So the software allows you to push or pull the data uh, as per the manager's needs or the business needs. We do have a sales dashboard that we provide as part of our product line. And so this particular sales dashboard would be pulling data from the point of sales system. In this case, we're talking about RMS. Uh, or AX, and so we're pulling sales information in, breaking it down by department, showing us totals for a particular date range. We can also see top performing departments, bottom performing departments, um, see that kind of in a pie chart. This is automatically refreshed every two minutes, so it can be left open in a browser or on an iPad, and will automatically refresh every few minutes, uh, keeping us up to date with what's going on. That same information can be used to uh, go back and forth here, so we can actually look at two date ranges. In this case, we're looking at a date range back in um, March 1st to March 15th of 2011, so the first half of the month, and then again for the second half of the month. You can see in this particular case, the blue lines in the, in the graph are actually showing us that we did more sales um, in the latter half of the month, and we can actually click on the pluses over on the left and drill down into the departments and the locations, but this is a particular case. We've got lots of extra sales in the kosher department, which are carrying us through about an extra $100,000 uh, by the end of the month. Getting into more of our analytics piece, if you've ever seen a BI type tool, um, we actually have one um, that's part of our product line. We're slowly separating that out, but um, we're looking at being able to track what each cashier is doing. So in this case, we're looking at detailed movement reports out of RMS data where we've got number of tickets that might have been done last quarter versus this quarter, um, being able to look at those numbers by cashier and see what each cashier is doing, and then take that information and compare it to the actual labor of those cashiers were there, see who was our most productive or our least productive um, based on the various KPIs you're interested in looking at. So TimeForge is, is commonly used to generate schedules, to collect the times, and then the next piece, of course, is to do payroll prep. And so TimeForge can generate that information, uh, be that a file or a QuickBooks integration, um, something over to ADP, 
direct integration into Great Plains as needed. And if you've ever done payroll, uh, you don't want to be the guy that they're waiting on for their checks. So we make it as seamless as possible. Generally, payroll, assuming the punches are right in our system, can take anywhere from two to five minutes tops, generate the file, do some validation checking, and, and away we go. So um, we're able to approve payroll punches. This is a very zoomed in view of our payroll prep page. Uh, showing how many shifts we might have, what everybody was doing. Um, we actually will go through and um, run some math over the various shifts to see which ones might be out of character for an employee. So something you might want to look at a little more, why did somebody punch in and out nine times today, for example. Based on that information, we generate a file or, or again, go directly as needed. Another view of, of the information can be done through the mobile app. As you can see in this particular view, we can see sales and weather information. So we do collect uh, the weather uh, to help with forecasting. So if you're an outdoor concert hall or uh, something that maybe is very weather dependent, uh, that's very helpful. And from here, we can view and track through a number of, of uh, information or modules inside of TimeForge, our messaging module, our attendance entries, uh, who's scheduled for today, and we can use our phone to immediately contact and uh, change this information if we need to. We do have a built-in HR module that will track information like uh, time off requests, uh, I-9s, W-4s, uh, the Affordable Health Care, um, act and uh, who has the documents, who's missing the documents, which documents have expired. And we also have an applicant tracking and job board probably uh, just being candid at this point in time in 2014, one of our weakest points of the software. Uh, it's a module that's seeing a lot of development this year uh, to grow that out uh, so that by the end of the year we've got a full onboarding package with background checks and e-verify and all that uh, fun information. So our goal in the HR system is usually just to work together. So we want to make sure we're not these guys, uh, that we actually are working together uh, between operations and HR, because often those two groups get siloed. And when that happens, uh, we start looking at fines from the IRS or problems with the Department of Labor. So that includes managing time off requests, making sure that those are allocated to sick time, vacation time, that those checks are run at the appropriate times for the appropriate people. It also means making sure that we are issuing notices for employers uh, based on the exchange um, notifications that every employer is supposed to be sending out, regardless of whether or not they have one employee or 90,000. Um, and so these are supposed to be going out as of last October. Um, the IRS has said they're not going to find anyone until next year. Um, and that may, of course, get pushed off based on the politics. But um, at any rate, these need to be going out to staff. And TimeForge automatically does that based on higher dates and based on information that should be there and tracks that uh, staff members saw them and downloaded them. Um, kind of rounding out more of the HR functionality, we do have the ability to track uh, any arbitrary document, uh, pre-hire or onboarding, so resumes, cover letters, background checks, drug screenings, all of that information can actually be stored in TimeForge as a document repository, uh, and that way it's there and we kind of get rid of filing cabinets. We also have certifications and trainings that can expire every so often, so serve safe, work permits, I'm able to run a forklift, um, that kind of information can be stored, and we can notify the managers and the employees uh, as is necessary, uh, as is desired by the HR department. And of course, we can track the offboarding documents as, a, as an employee is leaving the organization. I did mention our applicant tracking, so that's a module that, that interfaces in with the entire system. Um, so we can set up job descriptions for each of the positions, for each location, and then provide a URL that can be uh, posted on a web page or Craigslist or Facebook or monster.com. And that URL then collects the information 
And as the applicants apply, they become applicants inside of TimeForge. And so we're able to store the information for those applicants. And um, managers can rank the applicants and can set up a workflow that interfaces in with their calendar of what they want to do. If they want to do a phone interview, review their resumes, uh, check out uh, their background check, send them for a drug screen. Uh, and when they're done, they just click Hire, and that automatically transitions them over to an employee with all of the appropriate HR information already filled out. So because we are web-based, um, there's really very little to install on the client system. We have access and opportunity for employees to log in as well. It's a huge time saver for our customers, for your customers. Uh, to make sure that employees don't have to call up and find out what should their paycheck be, how many hours are they worked, working this week, can they swap a shift with someone else. Um, all of this information can actually be done through our cloud services. And so, again, we're trying to reduce confusion, real sign from, uh, from Target. Um, you know, we want to make sure that staff are able to uh, be in the loop and aren't confused about what's going on. So that includes the ability to log in remotely, log in via computer, an iPad, a cell phone, um, use our mobile app, which is available on uh, both Android and iOS, and I believe it's in the Windows Store, uh, or coming soon there. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. So we have the ability to see our schedule. In this case, it's the orange. Shifts can be given up, they can be rated so that we know if we've got bad manager problems or poor days where the shift and coverage isn't, isn't set up. We can see employee notifications of exchanges. Um, we can confirm a shift so that our management team knows that we are going to have um, coverage those days or that the Department of Labor is aware that people uh, did not show up for their shift. For Forge includes a functionality called a bid shift. This is kind of a workflow of how that works, but uh, for, say, a, a clerk at the flower shop uh, three weeks from now. Uh, doesn't know who that's going to be, just knows that they need a clerk that's eligible to work it. So at that point in time, all the eligible employees are notified, and anybody who wants to work that shift three weeks from now can actually log into TimeForge click on the shift and uh, join the shift. Um, and then the manager can actually be notified that the employee did kind of sheet here for our shift swap. Employees can give up a shift. Another employee can choose to pick it up. The manager is notified of the attempted shift swap. And if they approve it, then they're both notified. Both employees are notified as to who's responsible for the shift. Um, this can be turned on and off just like the bid shift. It's not a requirement for our, our uh, customers or your customers. Just to kind of give you an idea of what's going on in 2014, the next uh, quarter or two, Spanish version. We've uh, converted the entire application into Spanish, uh, looking at some other languages as well. So that'll be launched this quarter uh, or early next quarter, expanding out the mobile app to be able to do more information, more KPIs, more, more data for uh, our POS integrations, um, more editing of punches, so there's a vast difference in how punches are edited with somebody who has 100 employees and somebody who has 10,000 employees. So making that more seamless is, is definitely on our agenda. Getting into more of the HR, the E-Verify, background checks, self-service, where payroll administrators are able to create 
PDF forms or our dealers are able to create PDF forms and create a new revenue stream, um, being able to help out create those electronic forms for their customers, um, and then outsource payroll. So we are actually uh, in the process of becoming a, a payroll service bureau uh, for smaller customers rather than somebody like a QuickBooks as we already have all of that data. So kind of now that you've, you've seen a, an overview of TimeForge, you know, back to how can you help your customers. And so you can certainly help your customers by providing insight into store level sales, lots of reporting options, you know, but how do we tie that into labor to make sure that we are hitting the right numbers, that we are properly staffed, that we have the right people there, um, perhaps into task management, which we didn't even talk about, but TimeForge does have the ability to do task management as well. Uh, looking at our payroll hours, how do we know that in real time so we don't wait in 2015 to where we suddenly have um, overtime and we're not only paying the overtime, but now we're having to provide insurance for extra employees that maybe wasn't planned or budgeted for. Uh, getting into the staff scheduling side of things, you know, can we provide some tools for your customers that um, help them build schedules so that they can manage their store better? Uh, those are all great things to be helping customers out with. You know, how are we managing employee efficiency? Are we looking at items per hour? Are we looking at uh, sales per man hour? Are we looking at labor percentage? You know, what are ways that we can do that? TimeForge has a nice, flexible engine to be able to show all of that information. And with uh, further ado here, we uh, will go ahead and open it up for any questions. If anybody's got any questions, um, that's kind of my very quick high-level overview of our product.